Hello, and um, welcome to our next section on genetics. We have been talking so far about Mendelian inheritance and what happens when the inheritance follows a different pattern other than the standard Mendelian pattern of inheritance. We're going to look at some of those different patterns um, specifically called incomplete and uh, dominance and codominance and we're going to analyze those phenotype ratios. So let's review with an example. What if we breed a long-haired cat right here with a short-haired cat? What would we expect to see if this was following simple Mendelian genetics? We'd expect to see the dominant trait in all of the kittens, right? Well, let's see what actually happens. The result, all short-haired kittens. So we know that that coat length in cats follows simple Mendelian genetics. It's a dominant recessive inheritance pattern. Um, and that is indeed what happened in cats. The short hair is dominant to the long hair. So we see short hair in all of the kittens. We'll do a little review here. <clears throat> when we set up our Punnett square for a simple Mendelian trait, and let's have the uh, capital H be the dominant allele for the short hair, and the lowercase h would be the recessive of the allele for the long hair. And when we fill out our punnant squares here, if we have our short hair parent on this side and our long hair parent on this side, they're both uh, homozygous for their respective alleles, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, we end up getting, surprise, surprise, all heterozygous offspring, and all of them have 100% um, are um, heterozygous for the genotype. The phenotype, they're, all, they're going to be, again, 100% short hair because uh, they all possess that dominant short-haired allele in them. So let's look at this right here. In this type of example, with our simple Mendelian trait for cat coat length, how many, what is the number of alleles that we are working with? Well, there is uh, the big H and the little h, right? There are two different alleles. How many different phenotypes do we have in this situation? Well, we can either have short hair or long hair. That's only two phenotypes. And what is the expression in our simple Mendelian trait when we're crossing those two, um, the uh, two different genotypes? Our expression is that we're going to have in a heterozygous situation, so in a heterozygous situation, we're going to have the dominant phenotype is going to be expressed. Now let's look at a different example. Let's see what happens when we breed a black chicken and a white chicken. Well, if they follow simple Mendelian genetics, we expect that the dominant trait will appear in all the little chicks. Let's see what actually happens. Wow, we get something totally unexpected. We get a checkered chicken. Look at that thing. That chicken does not look like what we were expecting. We were expecting the dominant trait to come out. This chicken, the uh, inheritance here, is not following simple Mendelian genetics. It is something very different. We can see that there's an equal mix of both black and white feathers, and we can conclude that neither black nor white is dominant over the other because both of them are being fully expressed in that offspring. Let's look at our Punnett square for this. This kind of expression where both are being equally and fully expressed, both trait, uh, both uh, alleles, we call this codominant. This is a codominant situation where both of the um, alleles are being fully expressed. So let's cross, let's see what happens when we cross these uh, 
offspring. Let's cross a checkered parent. Uh, here we have the checkered parent and another checkered parent, okay? Because both of them have both alleles that are being fully expressed. You can see that I'm writing both of the alleles capital, both the black and the white, because both of them are fully expressed. There isn't a recessive, per se. So let's look at what our offspring are going to be. Okay. Well, we have some interesting offspring. We have a genotype of black-black, right? We have a genotype of black white, and we have a genotype of white white. And our ratios are going to be one to two to one for those. What are those phenotypes? What do they look like? The um, chicken that is BB, what phenotype is that? Well, it will be a black chicken. It only has black alleles. So we have black. And then we also have a B and a W. What is that chicken going to look like? Remember, one is not dominant over the other in a co-dominant trait. So in this situation, that will be a checkered chicken. And I'm just going to abbreviate that, C-H-C-H, -C -H, checkered chicken. And then we have our very last chicken right here, W-W, it's white. So our phenotype ratio is also 1 to two to one. This is a very, this is a very standard um, ratio for co-dominant traits. Now, let's look right here at our questions. How many alleles do we have in this situation? We only have two. We have a black or a white. So there are only two alleles. How many phenotypes do we have? Well, in this situation, we have three different phenotypes. They could be black, they could be white, or they could be checkered chickens. So we get three phenotypes. That indicates if you've got three phenotypes um, that something else is going on besides simple Mendelian uh, genetics. And what is our expression here? Well, if we have for the heterozygote, the heterozygote, we will have they are both alleles are equally. both equally expressed, and I'll just abbreviate that there. Both alleles in the heterozygote will be equally and fully expressed. Now let's look at another example. What happens if we breed red carnations and white carnations? Well, if we were looking at a simple dominant recessive situation, we would expect either all red or all white offspring, as long as these were homozygous. What if we had a co-dominant situation? Well, if it was co-dominant, we would expect them to breed all red and white, just like our checkered chicken, that all the offspring would be red and white. Well, let's see what actually happens. Wow, the result when we do this in real life is pink. We get pink carnations. Isn't that unusual? Well, that certainly isn't the simple dominant inheritance. It is not co-dominant inheritance. It is something else. And what it is, it, it appears blended is what it appears. And we call this incomplete dominance. The red color is incompletely dominant to the white color. And we call it incomplete dominance. By the way, just as a side note, if you breed the pink flowers together, the next generation ends up having red, pink, and white. So let's look at this example and see what is going on with the alleles. Here's our incomplete dominant traits. Well, if we have a parent here, a red flower parent and a white flower parent, we are getting Red and white, red and white, red and white, and red and white. And our genotype ratio, 100% red and white. And our phenotype ratio is 100% pink. 
So what is our number of alleles in this situation? We have uh, two different alleles, either red or white, the R or the W, allele. How many different phenotypes do we have? What can our flower look like? Well, our flower could be either red, pink, or white. So again, in this situation, we have three different phenotypes, just like in our codominant situation. And what will the expression of the heterozygote be in this case? It will appear to be blended. And that is the expression in incomplete dominance. <clears throat> so let's summarize everything we've looked at here in this section. Simple dominance. The simple Mendelian genetics, where we have dominant and recessive, and it's called simple dominance. We have two phenotypes, um, and when we have our heterozygote, um, it will be expressed as the dominant allele. <clears throat> our second situation we looked at, codominance. Codominance will always have three different phenotypes. There can be three different uh, ways that it looks. The heterozygote of a codominant um, individual will have both phenotypes expressed. And then we have our third situation that we discussed, incomplete dominance. And in incomplete dominance, we also have three phenotypes, just like in codominance, but the heterozygote appears blended. Here are a few advanced ideas. I hope you look into some of these. Some of them are very, very exciting, very interesting. And, um, just pause the video, see if some of these um, pique an interest, <clears throat> and you can do a little research and show me your research in class, and I look forward to seeing you.